Hi, I'm Duncan from Six Five. Back in August of 2023, Google announced a new feature for Google Drive. It's one that we have all been waiting for for a very long time. Uh, we are now able to do e-signatures inside of your own Google Docs documents. And that means that you can put uh, requests in for various people, for example, on contracts to get signatures from them. So in this video, we're going to walk through that. I'm going to show you how it works. We're going to look at it from a signee's point of view as well as the requester's point of view. And if you are looking uh, at this from a signer's point of view, you can skip forward a whole bunch if you don't want to know how you put it together, but how you want to sign. Uh, just fast forward below. Let's get into it. So I'm going to start with a new blank document here. And um, let's just assume we've got a standard page, uh, signing page at the bottom here. So I've got two sets of signatures that I need. I've got uh, an authorization, and I'm just going to make that one a nice big title as well. So we've got a witness. Now to use the e-signature tools that Google Workspace has, we're going to click on insert, and we're going to find e-signature fields down here. And you're going to see that it gives us the ability uh, on the right hand side here to insert fields for signers. We can manage signers. We'll come back to that in a sec. And as this is just in a closed beta at the moment, we've got signature, initials, name, and an auto uh, for date signed. So let's do the first thing. We're going to need two signatures because we've got a uh, witness and we've got our main signatory. So I'll leave those two there. You can add as many as you need up to 10. And these labels are just uh, used as internal references to the document. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to start with signer one. So I'm going to take my signature box. I'm just going to click and drag it over so that it's next to, next to signed. I need the um, person's name. So I'll just put that next to name. And then the date will be auto completed. And I'll put that next to dated. Now, to do my witness, I've got to be careful now to change this over and go to witness. You see it's got a green box next to it. And that is significant because when I drag the signature box, you'll see it's actually this kind of green color here as well. So the first one is white and the second one is green. And then as you add more signees, the, the color starts to change. So same thing here. I'm going to go then put name in and then I'm going to go date signed. All right. So now I've got all my fields laid out. And of course, you can use tables um, uh, and improve your layout from my uh, quick demo here, but that makes it work. So now in the bottom right, I actually I should just uh, save my document. So I'll just give that a name and then I'm going to click request e-signature. Now, at the top, it uses your uh, file name, so demo e-sign, and then it puts the date and time, which is always your local date and time uh, into that as well. And then in signer and witness, you get to put in your email addresses for the people you're going to send to. And as you can see, it starts to um, give you options of who those people are and how you're going to work. So now I'm just going to use two other Google Workspace accounts that I happen to have. And then in here, I'm going to say, please sign using the tools. And you can change your order trail language to whatever it is you want to use. Now, the way this works is it pings out a PDF. So it creates a copy of this document and um, sends it as a PDF to the user. It's then a viewable PDF where you click the link. So I'll show you that in just a second. But for the moment, I'm now going to click Request e-signature. It's going to create the PDF with all the special stuff in it. And it's going to ask me if I want to share them because these people are external to my business. So that's going to depend uh, on your sharing settings for your organization as to whether you can share this externally or not. But these are named shares and that's fine in our organization. So we'll click on share. And as you can see, I've now got a PDF and an OK button to close this. If I click on the PDF, it's going to open it up. And the first thing you're going to see is your multiple pages, your header page. In our case, we don't have a header page. We're just going straight into the signature. And it says signature pending. Um, it does still have the, the sort of other um, usual Google Drive uh, tools in the top right here, which can be a bit confusing for people um, because they might think, well, they need to share it with someone else to get the next signature to do. Um, but if you click on the view details on this blue bar across the top where it says signature pending, it says this is who I'm waiting on. Uh, that's the message that you gave to them and, and how that works. And as I am the owner of that request, I can now cancel that request. 
So as you can see, it's very sort of functional at this point in time. It's very straightforward um, and those are my signature fields and it's all ready to go. Now, as I'm the owner of this request, I'm going to get an email that says new signature request and it says you, so it's sending it to me. You request a new signature on this document and it'll give me uh, a link to come open it again. As you can see, the, the PDF is attached down the bottom here. So now let's go and look at how that occurs or how that looks from uh, the signee's point of view. Uh, and it's worth pointing out that we can see we have two signees because they're uh, signified here and both of them have got a little clock next to their icons on the bottom right. Uh, that indicates that it is pending. Now from the signee's point of view, uh, they're going to start receiving some emails. So this one says new e-signature request. It tells you who it is who has requested that e-signature and it uh, shows the message that the uh, requestor has sent them as well. And they also get a view of who else needs to sign this request. So let's go right ahead and click on open. And again, as I am the signee, uh, the interface looks slightly different. So in the top right here, I get a mark complete, which is grayed out at the moment. I can't click on that. I can click reject if I don't want to sign it. And I can click on view details, much like the request door has. Uh, you can see who has the ability to request that. Um, uh, sorry, what the status is and who, who else is being um, requested to sign. So as the signee, you can see we've got two big um, buttons here. Uh, that one says name. So I don't know why it says name. Again, this is closed beta, but um, we'll, uh, we'll go with it for a second. So you type in your name and your initials, and then you click adopt and sign. And then I'll click that one as well. So I must have uh, set those up incorrectly in the original document. That should have been a signature, and that one should be the name. So it's worth reminding you at this point, this is a closed beta, which means that mistakes are being made and things aren't working quite as well. It also means that some of these features aren't available yet that you might see in competing e-signature platforms. So that's what's going on here. We've actually found a bug and we'll report this one to Google, but that's why the name field is coming up rather than the e-signature. If you rewind and you have a look at how I set it up, it was actually a signature field. So that one should have been a signature field. And as you can see, it's pre-populated the date. And now that I've completed all of the fields that I need, um, for example, you might also put an initial on every single page as is sometimes required. You can see the Mark Complete button in the top right now is uh, available. So I'm going to click on Mark Complete. It's just going to give me a warning about the terms of services. Like I say, the e-signature stuff is new. And it says now we are complete. So I'll close that window. And then uh, that, from this signer's point of view, is all done. Okay, so for the final step of this process, because we have the request or one signature and one witness, here is the witness. And uh, the witness can see that uh, there's two people that need to request. So they're going to repeat much the same process as the uh, first signee. And uh, again, at the top, we've got the Mark Complete button, which is grayed out. But because someone has already signed, uh, this person can now see that they've got a signature and a name field that needs to be completed. Again, we can click reject in the top right. We can click view details to see um, who has done what and when. And you can see here that the first signee, uh, uh, where it shows you the date and time when the user has, um, has done that. So let's go right ahead and sign this as the witness. So I'm just going to change my name here sign it as Duncan Witness, click on Adopt and Sign because it's given me uh, some signature panels here. One of the bits of feedback that we put into the system is obviously the ability to upload your own signature just like you can uh, in other e-signature services. Like I say, this is closed beta at the moment, but it is coming to Google Workspace, so I suspect that will happen soon. And then I simply click on the name field and that will put that in there. If I want to reverse it out, I can um, exit out. But there you go, I'll click on name. And as you can see in the top right, it now says mark complete. So I can click on mark complete, tick the box just to agree to the terms and click on agree and continue. Now at this point, every user has now completed the document, has completed the PDF. And as you can see now, if I click on show, just to show that new email, it says the signature is completed. And every one of the people in that chain is now going to get a copy of that PDF. 
so that we can all get a copy of uh, who has signed what uh, when they signed it and the audit trail gets attached to the last page of the PDF as well. So we can see here that uh, the signee originally sent the request. Here's the date and time of when it happened, all in UTC at this point in time. Those are the two signers when they did those signatures and then this is when uh, it was completed and this particular email has come through. Now going back to the requester, I'll just click on show here as well. As you can see, it's the same thing. The requester has a copy. We now know that um, we have two people that have signed the uh, PDF and the bottom copy, the bottom version of that PDF has, again, as we've just seen, um, all of the information in it and then the audit trail for it as well. So thanks very much for watching. If you found this interesting and useful, please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video talking about more about Google Workspace.